Hi, my name is Brian Kane, and I am a small business solutions advisor with the Microsoft Connections team. Our charter is to be a resource to small business owners and provide them information on all of the tremendous resources and tools that Microsoft offers them. If you are unable to attend one of our free live events or simply want to watch content we cover during one of them again, this is exactly what Connections Replay is for. And today, I'm extremely excited to tell you we're going to be talking about Windows SharePoint services. Before we jump into the product demonstrations, let's take a moment and review exactly what SharePoint is and why it's such a tremendous solution. Ten years ago, most large companies had one external public facing site and one internal site, more commonly known as the internet. Now, most large companies have hundreds, if not thousands of different sites, the majority of which are known as digital workspaces or sites where teams can come together and communicate and collaborate with one another. And one of the key reasons why this is possible is technology like SharePoint. Before to create a digital workspace, you'd have to first contact your database administrator. He or she would set up a new database for you so you'd access to all your company information. Then, you'd have to contact your web programmer who would set up some ASP.NET code just so you could enter in more code and finally your content. Then, you'd have to configure access rights using Internet Information Services. In the end game, this would end up costing a great deal of money, involve a number of people, and end up taking weeks if not months. SharePoint was designed from the ground up to be a provisioning engine to make that process as simple as possible. And then also, SharePoint Services is one of many SharePoint products. Think of Windows SharePoint Services as the underlying platform. And then, if you're interested in Microsoft Office SharePoint Server, Think of that as the value-added set of components and services that is built, built on top of Windows SharePoint services. And then finally, being able to access your information from a variety of geographical locations is extremely important. So SharePoint was designed from the ground up to work within a web farm environment. To understand Windows SharePoint services and the value it's able to provide you, consider this example. You're watching a cooking show and you notice that the cook or chef has all of his or her ingredients pre-cut for them and placed in bowls. Then when they go to create their culinary masterpiece, all they have to do is dump their bowls into the pan, stir and cook to perfection. Windows SharePoint services is not much different. Instead of creating a culinary masterpiece with all of the tools and resources you have access to, instead you're able to create a winning sales proposal, sales document, brochure, or whatever else the case may be. And when you think about a SharePoint site, there's really four key areas to understand. First and foremost, it's a centralized location where you can store all of your pertinent information. For example, you can include your documents, tasks, calendars, discussions, and even more. Then, it is a very secure entity. Only predefined users have access rights, and with the granular delegation of authority, you're able to control security rights at a document level. Also, with the web part technology that's included, you're able to customize it to the point where it's exactly the way you want. Think of web parts as the building blocks that you put together to create your SharePoint site. And we'll explore them in great length. Put into simpler terms, think of SharePoint as a digital location where you can communicate and collaborate with your peers. Take a moment and answer a few questions. First, 
how many emails do you receive per day? Is it over 25? How about over 50? I talk to a great number of people who tell me it's over 100. Along the same lines, how many faxes do you receive per day? How many physical orders, physical memos, mail, shouts across the hall, or other sources of information? The point I'm trying to make to you is that it's extremely easy to feel overwhelmed with the amount of information we receive. SharePoint addresses this by allowing us to manage and share this information in a much more easy manner. In the first part of this SharePoint demonstration, we're going to go through four steps. First, I want to show you how easy it is to create a SharePoint site. Then, we're going to customize our site by adding some new web parts and then adding content to those web parts. Finally, we'll take a look at some customization and security. In particular, versioning history and controlling access rights. And then finally, will show just how SharePoint is able to make this information extremely relevant to the end user by showing how many different ways we can connect the information to Outlook. Currently, I'm running a virtual version of Windows Server 2003 on my laptop. I point this out for two reasons. First, just to show you how amazing of an application it is. Essentially, I have two operating systems running on the same machine that are sharing the same physical resources. And then, the second reason I point this out is just to let you know that on an actual server, some of the steps we're going to go through will go a little quicker. Let's begin by opening up our SharePoint site. Then, we're going to add in a new site. We're going to click on Site Actions and then Create Site. Now, all we have to do is enter some basic parameters about our site. In this case, we're going to be setting up a site for our field sales force in Las Vegas. So, we'll call our site the Las Vegas Field Office and our URL Las Vegas. Then we can choose from a variety of different sites for different functionality. However, for right now, let's just choose Team Site. For example, later on we'll explore application templates. Then, an important element of security right here. We can inherit the security rights from the parent site, which in this case is our company Litware Inc., or we can set them up individually. Let's go ahead and do that. This way, someone could be an administrator on Litware Inc., however, only have read access rights on our particular site. Then we'll click Create. Just one more step before we create our site, and that's creating a new group. In this case, we want to create a new group for a sales force so that we don't have to manage access rights at an individual level, we can do it at a group level. Let's create a new group. And we'll call it the Las Vegas Sales Force. Then once we click OK, it's going to go in and configure our site for us. Our site has now been created. We're going to go through just two more steps in this webcast. Both will be accessed from the site settings, and we'll get there by clicking on Site Actions. The first thing we'll do is change the overall look and feel of the site by clicking on Site Theme. And then we'll select Cardinal, which is this great red theme. After I click Apply, you can see that the Las Vegas field office is now red. And finally, one more step we're going to add in a user. Let's click on people and groups and then new. I have a problem however. I know I want to add in Brian but I don't remember his last name. So I'll click on the address book and then search through the company directory for him. 
and oh, I see there's Brian Cox I wanted. So I'll select Brian and then click OK. And I'm going to add Brian as a Salesforce member and then click OK.